There's also growing debate, <coughs> both within the game and, and, and by observers, about whether uh, we should separate professional uh, from amateur rugby. It's a complex issue because it needs to be answered at a, at a number of levels. I think firstly we probably all accept that uh, at the top end of the game where the best players are playing, there probably needs to be a greater separation of professional and amateur rugby, just simply so we can bring um, some control uh, over the costs associated with the professional game. Uh, clearly in New Zealand we're spending more money than we are generating around the New Zealand Cup, Rebel Sports Super 14 and the All Blacks and we need to do something about that and that work is, is underway. At a more organisational level, um, we've always held the view that amateur rugby has to have its, its place. Uh, we take the view here at the New Zealand Rugby Union that we have two very firm bookends. We have the All Blacks at one end, they're clearly the, the pinnacle of the game, but just as important and possibly more important for the future is the amateur game. School, club, volunteers, referee development, all the things that the provincial unions and clubs and schools do on our behalf, that's where all our players come from. So we're committed to ensuring that those two games, those two ends of our game at an organisational level have a connection because if they don't, we may well find that the, the amateur end of the game doesn't get the resources or the focus it requires and is left to stand on its own two feet. And in the end, it actually is the professional game, particularly the All Blacks, that generate the majority of income and revenue that uh, helps us drive uh, rugby at, at an amateur and community level.